Luca, why did you remake this movie? This was a, you've wanted to do this for like 72% of your life. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I, I have to be honest. I think that much of my life has been uh, stalking in my, in my mind and, and not only Dario Argento. I remember I was a kid. I went to Rome because I had to do some, I, was, I come from Palermo, Sicily. I had to do some medical thing, and I begged a friend of my mom to drive me all the way to Viale Mazzini, which is almost like Santa Monica Boulevard, to go up and down and find on all the doors the name Dario Argento because I knew he was living there. <laughs> so basically, I think this is a sort of uh, ultimate act of love for Dario. For you and for Tilda, this has been discussed for some time. This was not something that you decided to do uh, over a weekend. Why the what appealed to you about the original Suspiria this is for both of you and then and then because the original has a very very different ending. I'm curious whether the I'm glad we're talking about it after the movie cuz so I can so did it no spoiler in Well, but they've they have they've had 41 years to see the original. Um but so was the was your original idea? I'm going to remake this movie, and we are, uh, and we're going to make Susie part of it. Well, the F Darius film is uh, when you see it at the age of 14, it's like it's a punch, but it's a good punch. Like it, it wakes you up. And uh, I was very serious about the movie. Not only I love the, uh, let's say formal qualities of the film, but I was invested in, in the movie, in the story, in this, uh, in this world of witches and in the coven being also a, uh, related to dance. So it, I really, I don't know, it struck something very strong in me. And with all the things we love, somehow we want to possess them. And that's how I wanted to make it into a movie. But we never talked about it as a remake. We always, I always describe it as a, as a cover and, you know, nobody covers a song that they don't love. Right, right. And nobody tries, I mean, unless they're, you know, two sandwiches short of a picnic, tries to make it exactly the same as the, the original. And also, there are so many countless covers of Hamlet and Faustus and whatever else. It felt like it, it was a provocation, Dario's film. And it just, you know, it was like a... Like a homeopathic treatment, it kind of <laughs> it got it got the juices flowing. I mean, it was the poster that actually I would say maybe made Luca a filmmaker in the first place. Forget the film; it was the poster. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I thought it when I was ten. Very impressive. This body, this blood, the severed head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jessica, have you uh, seen the uh, the first one? <laughs> tell 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 those who may not know. Uh, uh, what your connection to the original Suspiria is. The original Suspiria, I play the part of Susie. 41 years ago, but who's counting? Did you, uh, you got a phone call from uh, from Luca? How did you learn that, uh, that there was interest in having, and that there would be a remake and that they were interested in having you in it? Well, I've been hearing for a long time that-, that Not a remake, had, a cover, I been, like that uh, better. Pardon? Yeah, a people cover. have been mumbling yeah. about uh, doing another version of Suspiria um, for years, and I kept hearing different directors' names associated with. I never paid much attention because, as you know, in Hollywood, these things seldom happen. So, um, but then I heard that Der uh, that that Luca uh, was associated; that he wanted to make a Suspiria, and um, that just seemed to me like an excellent idea. Um, <laughs> I was a big fan of his films, and I thought. You know, trying to imagine how he would put his imprint on this material just filled me with joy. <laughs> so then I got a phone call um, from Luca, and he said, Hi, Jessica, would you like to do a cameo in my Suspiria? And I said... <laughs> Well, he had me at hello. I didn't. I just said absolutely. And then I and then he said, "Can you can you do the part in German?" And I said, "Of course, I can do the part in German." <laughs> and then uh, we hung up, and I went to the Berlitz School as quickly as I possibly could, and said, "I would like to learn German this afternoon. <laughs> do you think you can accommodate me?" So, um, 
that's uh, the rest is history. Chloe and Mia, what was your? How did you get drawn into the project? Did you guys have any experience with the uh, with the first version? Um, I had a Skype uh, meeting with Luca, and I remember it was November. It was a very big deal for me, so I remember the month and where I was and everything. And uh, he, yeah, he shared with me that. It, Suspiria had been a, a passion of his his entire life, and he wanted to make something that was less uh, a, a remake and more a reimagining. And I was incredibly excited to have the chance to work with Luca and been a big fan of his for years, and Tilda and Dakota and Chloe. I think everyone was um, incredible at what they do. And uh, and no, I hadn't seen the original Suspiria. And then once I landed in Italy, then I um, I watched it. And it's blown this away. this may be a, an obvious question, but you say you remember everything about that because it was a big deal for you. Why was it a big deal for you? Because Luca is my dream director, and he makes the kinds of movies and explores the kinds of people that I'm drawn to. And so to have the chance to just talk with him was. Um, everything to me. Uh, Chloe, uh, uh, what drew you uh, to this? Was it Luca, Tilda, the, the rest of the cast? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, obviously the, the cast was, was something that just felt like I couldn't turn that down, but, but the chance to, to find that anonymity, uh, to, to find Patricia and, and to, to do this marathon of a scene, um, which really was kind of like a marathon. Uh, and really it was, it was so... It was just such a beautiful collaborative process. You know, Luca, I think one of the first things you said to me on the phone, you were like, I want no one to know who you are. I just want it to be like this, the first, you know, 15 minutes and it's this massive splash into it. And you end up hearing what you're about to see for the rest of the next two and a half hours. You find that all out right then. But to be able to hide that and, and to make it feel, I don't know, is this like wonderful dance that we did? Um, and it was just a beautiful opportunity to collaborate and do that and, and uh, to find the anonymity. Yeah. I didn't know until three days after the movie, Tilda, when somebody told me. I suspect that there are many people here. H how many parts did you play in, in the film? Well, if you read the poster, um, I play Madame Blanc. Um, that, part, that one I think they okay. know. Right, we're, right. There, we're all right there. And uh, um, th we always wanted a new face to play Dr. Klemperer, and we didn't want an actor. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. No, man, no, you, nobody has any idea. None. Well, don't tell anybody. <laughs> right, that's the key. Don't. Uh, uh, we never intended to tell anybody, but, you know. There were some little leaks that went on, and so we decided, because it's so important not to be liars, right? It's so important not to deal in fake news. We decided uh, a couple of weeks ago that we would rather um, spill the beans than be seen to be trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. But the fact is that Dr. Klemper is played by Lutz Ebersdorf, who is a psychiatrist who lives in Berlin and is... Um, He's a private individual and is not really up for any of this kind of circus. Um, and uh, we wanted the real deal and we got the real deal. We wanted someone who wasn't, um, who wasn't gonna give any kind of grandstanding performance, someone who was just gonna show up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what we got. Uh, how much uh, dance work did you have to put in for this? Well, um, from the time that we started talking about the film, it was two or three years before we shot it. And then I was always kind of, when we were figuring out the dates of, of shooting, trying to put in enough time to train my body. Um, so a, a year before we started filming, I began working with a woman named Mary Helen Bowers who trained Natalie Portman for Black Swan. Um, she does this sort of like tiny movement workout where all your muscles get really tight and long and it's so intense and painful. But I wanted Susie's body to have, uh, to appear as though she's been dancing her whole life. Dancing and also like climbing trees and being a child. Um, 
So I did that on and off. I trained with a, a dancer who came to a set that I was on in Vancouver when I was filming a different film. Um, and then uh, we spent two weeks, about a month before we started shooting in Varese with um, the dancers and Damien Jelly, the choreographer, me and Mia, just hardcore every day learning the choreography. And then as we began shooting and as we kind of knocked out the dance scenes, I would keep training to do the other dance scenes that would come up, like the audition piece or whenever we were continuing to film. So it was kind of sporadic also during filming. So on and off, I trained for a year, pretty much. Congratulations. This is a beautiful, beautiful film. 